Hey y'all, did you ever want a small 3D printing case that can fit an ATX motherboard, ATX power supply, ATX video card, and water cooling? Well, based on your feedback, the answer is yes, so I'm going to show you how to build your own. In my previous video, I shared with y'all a test bench that was modular that we'll be using in this build. And we're also going to revisit some techniques from one of my earlier case designs. Feel free to skip to 12 minutes if you just want to see the final results. I want to give a quick shout out to Smeller2, who shared a great fix for the Shidi Tech X Max 3. There was a design flaw that caused parts to hit each other. Smiler2 suggested using zip ties to replace some clips and it's been working great. I'll 3D print some modified clips and share them soon. Thanks again Smiler2. And if y'all have any suggestions while watching, please post in the comments. I love hearing from y'all. It was really important to apply this fix because we'll be using the entire available bed area for this build. It's always a lot of fun when you use the entire bed. Here you'll see I almost used the entire bed for this part. I used a little more than an entire roll of filament for this build, not including the test bench from the previous video. The parts were printed nice and stiff with PETG impregnated with carbon fiber. If you've seen my other builds, then you already know I'm going to be penetrating my parts with heat inserts at 320 degrees Celsius. The normal temperature that PETG melts at is at around 250 degrees Celsius, but the extra heat makes inserts slide in more easily, almost like they have lube. The inserts used for this build are sized at 632, but there are M.25 inserts for the USB ports. Not every hole is designed for a bigger heat insert. I'll be using some two-part epoxy for the magnets in this build. Just make sure you have polarity correct when sliding in opposing magnets. I'm only using a small dab of epoxy, but with how tight they fit, I probably don't really need them, but I'll take every chance of filling a hole with goop I can get. It was pretty darn cold in my garage, and you can see how gummy the epoxy got but I let it cure inside the house just to be safe. The faceplate part for this build can be switched out easily and I have some plans on different designs. Let me know in the comments what kind of designs you'd like to see. I was still using the test bench while designing this case so I had to take it apart in order to use the main piece where the motherboard sits. While taking the test bench apart, I was still amazed at how well things fit together and just how strong the parts have been holding up. From my personal observation, the PETG carbon fiber prints I just made were very comparable to both the ABS with glass fibers and PET with carbon fiber parts from the test bench. These fiber impregnated filaments have been amazing since I started using them. This is the part we'll need for this build. This part is optional, but I made some pieces to fill in the holes of the motherboard tray. They were printed without the top and bottom layers to get this mesh effect, and I used some tape glue to keep them in place. You can use a more permanent method if you intend on using this case long term. They should slide right in and some firm presses where the tape glue was set should be enough to keep them in place. I'm going to go over all the parts starting with the motherboard tray. You already saw the three hole fillers and I'm still using the standard ATX standoffs and keeping the stick on feet from before. These heat inserts won't be used for this build, just yet but the heat inserts on all the edges will be critical in the function of this build. I hope you like filling screw holes because there's a lot of action in this one. This part fills in another gap while providing some venting. It'll be fixed with two screws and keep its alignment with protrusions and indents along its edges. This is the main side panel that allows ample venting as seen with how much you can see through it. It stays in place with its slide rail interface and also has protrusions and indents along the other edges. The rear panel is also a mesh. The three gaping holes correspond to the motherboard, power supply, and GPU. It has screw holes that attach to the motherboard tray, top panel, and bottom panels. There are indents and protrusions throughout which help align the other panels together. And two inserts help affix the GPU. This is the bottom panel and it's also a mesh but it can be a solid piece if you want, I was just conserving filament. You'll see four heat inserts that will be used to attach the radiator brackets. The rear edge will have inserts, protrusions, and indents. There are six screw holes that will give a solid connection to the motherboard tray. Here's the sliding rail interface. 
more protrusions and indents, here's where the PSU will sit. The top panel must be printed as a mesh to allow hot air to escape. These six screw holes securely attach the top panel to the motherboard tray. Protrusions and indents are again found at the front edge. And here's the slide rail. More inserts, protrusions, and indents on the back edge. These two inserts are for the PCI Express GPU riser cable. These fan mounts might change for the final STL. Two inserts will hold the radiator bracket. This simple part has two screw holes and a slot for the GPU tab. Each radiator bracket has an insert for the power button part, three magnets for the front panel, screw holes for the fans, and more holes for the top and bottom. The front I.O. has protrusions and indents, two mounting holes, a slide rail system, and a 19mm button hole and USB holes. Lastly, the front panel must be printed as a mesh to feed air to the radiator. It'll have protrusions and indents all along its edges, six magnets, and a slide rail system for the I.O. area. If you've seen my other videos, you're probably wondering, when will you start talking about feet again? Well, wonder no more because here come the feet. I'm once again using these cute little feet to help stabilize and support the case. Make sure to use an ample amount of feet on the edges and middle sections, especially where screw holes or inserts are located since these are areas that will have direct weight above them. Pay careful attention to supporting the area underneath the power supply, since it's likely going to be where a vast majority of the weight will be concentrated. If you don't give this area some feed action, your case might go limp and saggy. We'll continue the installation by screwing the motherboard to the motherboard tray. I like to reverse until I feel the threads engage before going all in. The gap filler piece aligns with the two tabs and is screwed in as shown. The top panel also aligns with these three tabs before being screwed into place. The bottom panel is also installed in the same way. The rear panel is then screwed into the heat inserts located on the motherboard panel and top and bottom panels. The riser cable is installed in the motherboard, and the other end is screwed into the top panel. Here, I'm blasting some thermal paste on the face of the CPU. I designed this case with AIOs in mind, and here it is getting installed. You may need to do this before installing the motherboard. Don't forget to plug in the power connector for the pump. I had a nicer 19mm power button with an LED, but I broke it, so I had to use this boring one. The USB ports are screwed in as shown, and you might notice my cables are getting a little worn. I don't think they designed them to be installed over and over, especially in small form factor PCs. Installing the power button cable now is advised. I'll have the fan mounts redesigned. Here you can bear witness to my fail. The sequence between radiator, fan, and bracket aren't always the same, so you can order them however fits your components. I had to put it in this order because there was a fill slash purge port on the unit I was using. I'll post the screws and washers I used in the description. This is how I oriented my AIO, and yours might differ based on factors like tube length, stiffness, diameter, and so forth. The radiator brackets will attach to the top and bottom panels using screws. Plug in your fan connectors now, since access will become difficult soon. Same goes for the USB header. I posted a question asking how my viewers felt about custom length cables, because this case requires it due to its compact size. I tried using the stock lengths and failed. I'm going to post some estimated lengths that I think will work in the description. But here I'll show you how I modified the stock cables to their proper lengths. I had to unbundle the cables being careful not to damage any along the way. I removed each pin one by one, cut them to length, asked them for a strip show, carefully slid the wires in the slot, 
I closed her legs slightly for a tighter fit. I promise I wasn't this nervous the 60 times I had to do this, but I get a little stage fright when I'm on camera. And yes, you heard me right, you have to do this 60 times, so I highly suggest just buying the cables if you value your time and body. With the proper length cables, installation becomes a breeze since there's little wire management needed. Connection locations might be different based on the motherboard and power supply you use, so double check the cable lengths on your own. Next, we'll install the front I.O. using some screws. I carefully installed the GPU into the riser. If you're rich, theoretically an RTX 4090 should fit. Slide the GPU cap over the tab and use the two screws to secure it in place. My GPU requires two 8-pin connectors, but your GPU may need more or less or even none at all. If you have an RTX 4090 and attempt this build, please let me know how it goes since I can't afford to put my theory into practice. It's a little easier to have the 24-pin cables attached to the PSU before shoving the PSU in place. The PSU is screwed into the back panel like with any other case. Isn't it weird that I haven't talked about feet in a while? Well, to help add some security to our expensive video cards, I'm using this GPU support in the shape of a foot. Here's a quick reminder of how much cable management we avoided with the custom length cables. Proper length cables also offer better airflow for cooling and less noise, and look better, do you agree? Just slip in the side panel, and the front panel will self-locate using the guides and magnets. With everything assembled, it was time to test temperatures. Long story short, the case performed very well compared to the open test bench setup. The noticeable decrease in CPU load temperatures might have been due to better TIM application, but I'll take the win anyway. GPU temps should be higher, but the exhaust fan helped a lot. All in all, I'm pleasantly surprised with how well this project turned out. Not only does the case look fantastic, but its thermal performance was a welcome bonus. And to think that this case was born from being a test bench still amazes me, and I'm the one who created it. This isn't the first 3D printed case that can fit ATX size components, but I'm still proud to have made my own and have it turn out as well as it did. And this little adventure isn't finished yet, there's still many ways for it to grow, due to its expandable nature. What would you use these vacant screw holes for? Let me know in the comments. If you've stuck around this long and like what you've been watching, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. You can also leave a comment with anything on your mind about the project or this channel. It would be awesome if you shared the link to people who might also like it. And subscribe if you haven't yet. Those actions will help this channel grow and motivate me to produce more content. I'm halfway tempted to print out the side panel in clear PETG, but I'm worried the PSU will block too much of the view. Let me know what you think. For fun, I recorded this size comparison to a mid-tower case and it brings a smile to my face. I also did a size comparison with this full-size tower and the presence is hard to capture on camera but I think you get the idea. I also threw in my personal PC and seeing them side by side has got me motivated to size down, but with bigger parts. But it's easy to forget how much my personal PC outclasses many builds due to its dual radiator design. Let me know if you want to see a dedicated video of my personal PC on this channel. For now, please enjoy the rest of the hero shots of this build.
I know the days are short, so it means a lot when you take the time to watch my projects. I hope you found this video informative, entertaining, or inspiring. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to show you what I'm already working on next.